Hey guys, today we're going to cover the last few items on our series as we go through all of the features that Magi has to offer. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about prompt management, how you can save and share and store and use your uh, saved prompts. Uh, we're going to go through some of the account level settings that you may not have known existed, and we're going to cover how to upgrade your account and add more usage when you need it. So, first and foremost, Saved prompts is something that we've had from day one. And very very early on in the early days of ChatGPT, I found that it was very important that if I found a prompt that worked really well and I thought that I was going to use it over and over again, I had to find a way to store that prompt so that I can access it and always get to it to use it again. So when I was building Magi, obviously I wanted to build that functionality right into the app itself. And so uh, we did in fact do that. So if you notice over here on the sidebar, there is a prompts section. This is where you can create, manage your prompts that you save inside of Magi. It's very easy to do. Once you navigate here, you can simply click new prompt in the top right corner. You can select which type of prompt it is. That way you know, uh, you know throughout the app, you can remember which type of prompt this is for, and it will only show these types of prompts when appropriate. Um, so, for example, when you're in the editor page, you won't see your text prompts, you'll only see your image prompts. So, assign it a type, whether that's text or image. You can give it a title. This is totally optional, just really to help you remember what that prompt is in a, you know, a short title. And then you can type the actual prompt in the, the final input there, exactly as you want that prompt to be handed over to whatever AI model that you're going to use it for. And you would just hit save the prompt and then it would appear in your list here. Now this list is filterable. You can filter it by uh, all prompts. You can filter by only text-based prompts and by only image-based prompts. Uh, just to make it super easy for you. You can also sort by uh, date added, modified, and or the uh, alphabetical word. Now you can also search through them if you're looking for something and need to find a very specific one. We also have prompt folders. So if you wanna stay organized and keep your prompts into folders as well, we allow you to do that in the same way that you can with your chats. So you can just click, click on the create new folder, give it a name, hit the create folder button, and then you have a new folder. And then whenever you have a prompt that you'd like to move into that folder, uh, hover over it, click on the folder icon, and choose that uh, folder that you want to move it to. Um, similar to the chats page, you can also pin prompts to the top just to kind of keep them um, you know, right at the top of the list for you, and that way they'll always be right at the top there. Uh, you can copy the prompt right from that list page and then go paste it to wherever you need it to go. And you can, of course, edit those prompts uh, if you ever need to modify them. Um, you can change the entire text in that prompt and the type of prompt also and hit save and it'll save your changes. Now, if maybe you purchased a pack of prompts from somewhere on the internet or you have been keeping a spreadsheet list of your prompts over in Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel, we do allow you to import prompts as well. So we have a convenient import button here, which when you click it will pull up a pop-up where you can drop in a, an, a CSV file um, and upload prompts in bulk. And you can even download the um, example file here so you know exactly how to structure those CSV files when you do want to import them. And then once you hit import, they will all appear right inside your list. And so how do we use these when we're in an actual chat? Let's go head over to the chat page and we'll look at an example. So here I am on the chat page and over on the right hand side, if you remember from our previous video, we do have a prompts folder here where you can click, open up that, that tray and you get your list of prompts here. You can search through them, you can filter them, you can add a new prompt. Uh, in the same way that you can add it from the other page, you can add a new folder in the same exact way. And what happens here is you can actually click on a prompt and it'll appear right inside the input automatically. If you want to maybe expand that prompt to remember what it says, you can click on the arrow button and see a full uh, detail of what that prompt actually has in it. And you'll also notice when you've expanded a prompt, you have a copy button, you have an edit button where you can actually edit the content of that prompt. You can move it to a folder and you can delete it. You can access your folders here as well. Just click the drop down button on the folder to see all of the prompts inside of that folder. 
Now, just as an example of how I typically use these, I tend to have a process for creating blog posts in particular, a series of prompts that I tend to hand off to the AI model. And uh, here's kind of how I've developed my own system for this. And so you'll notice here in this blog posts folder, I have them actually numbered. And what I can do here is I can uh, sort these by alphabetically, and that kind of shifts them into the perfect arrangement for the for me to execute these prompts in order. So you notice I have them labeled 01, 02, 03, 04. Um, and this is a back and forth iterative prompt process that I found works really well when I'm trying to build blog posts with AI. So I have my number one uh, prompt here and all I have to do is click that in there. And I've put some square brackets in here to indicate for myself where I should customize that prompt. You know, this is sort of the placeholder content that I want to replace. And so all I'll have to do here is just highlight that and type in the topic. So let's say um, orange tabby cats. And uh, that's pretty much it for this prompt. And so you can kind of customize these saved prompts to your needs. You can put in you know, placeholders and so forth that represent variables that might change from time to time, whatever uh, your current reason for using that prompt is. Now I'll simply send this off to the AI. Once I'm done with that, I can click step two and move on to the next prompt in the list. And then after that, the next prompt and so forth. And so this is kind of how I've found a, a really great system to manage these prompt workflows that I have. And there are really lots of ways to use saved prompts from standard operating procedures or things that you just find work really well for you on a day-to-day -day basis. So go ahead and give them a try. I'd love to hear your thoughts, your ideas on how you would use save prompts in your day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week workflows and AI interactions. Now, the next thing I wanna cover in this video is just some account settings. Um, many of you may not have taken the time to even look at your account settings to see what's available there. So let's click down here on the profile, uh, my profile, and we're gonna go to account settings. And once you scroll past the account info section, you'll see a handful of things that say chat preferences. And uh, some of these, uh, I'll just list them out here, automatically set chat title. That is the setting which every time you start a new chat and you send your first prompt, the AI is actually going to figure out what the intent and decide on an appropriate title for that chat conversation, just so it's easier for you to find later on. Now, if you don't want it to do that, you don't want it to automatically come up with its own titles, that's fine. You can turn that setting to off. I actually like that setting, so I'm gonna keep it on. The next one is send current date. So by default, a lot of people tend to want the AI to know things that it doesn't necessarily know automatically, such as the date. We might take it for granted that uh, that AI doesn't actually know what day it is. AI is a static model that is sitting on a server somewhere that's been trained on data that is X years old. And the current day and time is not something that it's given. And so we have layered in some of those details for it, such as the current date. And so with this setting turned on, we will then send the current date and time with your message so that the AI is uh, aware of the time and date. Send username is another one. Uh, maybe you don't want it knowing your name, or maybe you do. If you find it helpful to have the AI know who you are and, and uh, know who it's interacting with, at least your name-wise, uh, you can keep this setting on. Otherwise, you can turn it off if you don't want the AI to know your name. We also have a setting for the Slack submit message style. So if you don't like hitting enter and sending your prompt, some people do find that a bit jarring and hard to get used to. You can turn the setting off and so that when you hit the enter key, when you're typing out your prompt, it will not send the prompt. It'll just give you a new line. Now, some people also like the AI model to know uh, to, to be self-aware, to know its own name. And again, this is one of those things that you may assume the AI model knows, but it doesn't. It's not something it's trained on. It's not self-aware. Most AI models are not self-aware in that way. And so we have to supplement that information. This could be a positive or it could be a negative. It could negatively affect the, the outputs in some scenarios. Um, so if you don't want the AI's name or that information to be sent along with it, the, could possibly um, dilute the output in some way, then you can turn that off. But if you do want the AI to know its own name, then you can in uh, turn that setting on and it'll be included every time you send a message. Um, and then remember chat settings. So whenever you change your AI model inside of the chat or you change your persona, if this setting is turned on, the, the app is going to remember 
what your previously selected settings was. And so every time you change that, it's going to remember something new. That way, the next time you start a conversation, it'll start with whatever the previously selected model and persona was. Now, lastly here, we, I believe we did talk about this in another one, but it's worth noting here, you can add personal context to any, all of your conversations in Magi. This will carry across teams. This will carry across workspaces. It will follow you personally because it's attached to your account. So if you have any particular instructions that you want the AI to remember every single time you start a conversation with it, this is where you would add that personal context. Now, if for whatever reason you want to delete your account, you never want to come back to Magi again, and you never want to find any of the stuff that you created here, you can, of course, delete your account. We give you that ability, and we don't hide it or obfuscate it. We make it easy for if you want to leave, uh, you're welcome to do so. Now, lastly, let's talk about usage and monitoring that usage and being able to upgrade and increase that usage when you need it. So if you go over here to the sidebar again, there is a usage page. Now on this usage page, you'll be able to see how many words you've used in your current monthly cycle. And it'll give you a percentage of how many of those words of your total monthly words are used. And you'll be able to see a helpful little guide here of when that monthly cycle is set to renew. And so you see here, I've used 101,502 words out of my, my allowed 200,000 words for the month. And I can see that I have 16 days left in my cycle to when that renews. So uh, that way you can kind of keep track of your usage and monitor, you know, if you're about to go over or if you're well under and you have uh, plenty of room to, to sort of use up the rest of your words for the month. Now, the other thing here is if you do ever come to the point where maybe you've exhausted your usage for the month or you're getting really close to exhausting your usage and you don't want to be interrupted in that um, in your work. There are two ways to upgrade. You can top up using the top up button and you can add more usage to the sum of five, 10 or $20 worth of additional words added to your plan until the end of the month. Um, and you can also upgrade your plan at any time. Uh, you can move this slider back and forth to see all of the available plans and then choose the plan that would um, best suit you from here on out if you wanna upgrade or downgrade your plan. And actually there is one last thing that I wanted to share with you all. We do have a rewards program currently. And uh, while we have retired the bonus words program, we do still have the ability for you to earn money off of your bill. If you open the rewards task here, you can click the view task button. And uh, once you've signed in using your Magi email address, you'll be able to sort of thumb through our available tasks. Now, some of these are expired, but if you click on the content creation and reviews tab, we do have uh, six different tasks that you can complete and earn a dollar amount off of your next billing cycle. Uh, so you can record a video testimonial for $5 off. You can write a blog post about Magi to get $25 off your next bill post a, a review on YouTube, write a how-to guide, or go over to our review section and write a review on G2 or write a review on Trustpilot. So just a few ways you can earn some extra credit towards your next bill. And that's it for the rewards tab. More rewards coming soon. We're thinking about overhauling this entire space to give you a few more options and a few more ways to, to really um, you know just earn uh, some, some cash off of your Magi bill and be able to get basically free usage out of Magi. So that is all we're covering today. Hope it was helpful. I hope this entire series has been helpful. And if you have any questions, of course, as always, we are here to help.